I have a new giveaway going on right now. I am giving away three copies of Metroid Dread uh, for the month of October. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed to the channel. That's it. We will draw the winners at the end of the month. Uh, so I wish all you guys luck on that. Hey everyone, this is the Nintendo Switch OLED. Obviously you see it's working here, Link's running around, everything's all good. Um, so when I have been making videos about this over the last week, I kept thinking to myself, what can I do that no one else has done? Well, I've done things like I've taken apart the dock. Obviously, some people really appreciated that video. I've done some other crazy things. Like I did a so-called teardown where I didn't really take it all apart. I did take the dock apart. I took uh, the switch apart, but I didn't really do a full disassembly or a full reassembly. Um, it was more of a, hey, I accidentally broke one of the ribbon cables on one of the rails on the switch OLED. So I was kind of afraid at the time to go deeper than that, knowing I still had other videos to make. In fact, I still have one more video to make after this. And I understand all of the quote unquote Switch OLED reviews have came out from all the major media outlets today. I, I totally get that. But have they really spent the same amount of time I have with this? I question that considering I knew they didn't get it until this week. Now, that all being considered, there was one type of video I wanted to do that I knew had a very high likelihood of causing what I would say is permanent damage. Um, it, it was not the screen burn-in test because honestly, there's not enough time to do that. It takes thousands of hours to create permanent burn-in on OLED. So instead, I decided to do something insane. People wanted to know who makes the screen. People wanted to know details about the screen. Let's just say I broke my Nintendo Switch OLED to show you this. Don't believe me? At least I died here. Here's Breath of the Wild. Seems to be working fine. I don't know if you can see the indicator light is on. And uh, let's see what happens when uh, I take the switch off the dock. Think this is some sort of trick? Screen's not working? Let's crank that volume up and run around. I'm gonna watch what happens when I put it back in the dock. I broke my Nintendo Switch. Now let's go into why I did it.
can see here, I am going through a really, really long montage of breaking apart the Nintendo Switch OLED. I literally took the Switch OLED uh, and put it to pieces. Um, I, t I, I literally tore everything out of the Switch OLED. Whether it was the speakers, the main board, uh, one of the sub boards, whether it was the heatsink, the fan, and yes, I even removed the screen. Now, the big thing here is obviously to do this without any other guides existing on the internet specifically for this device, it could be a little difficult and a little bit risky. Now, I have removed everything inside of an original Switch, the launch version and a version two and a Switch Lite before. The difference in that though is because one, it's using a different panel and two, it's using a plastic front. So it's actually not that difficult to remove a screen uh, from its housing on there because it's really just removing that plastic front and then the rest of the screen becomes freely available. On this device, on Switch OLED, for those that aren't aware, it uses a glass front, uh, which is better in some ways. It's way more scratch resistant, but obviously a lot more fragile. There's no flexibility with it. So if you try to create any sort of minimal flex, chances are it's going to crack. And when you're working on screen removal, where you need to get a tool behind um, the actual glass to actually break the seal on the glue, there's a high likelihood you're probably going to crack the glass. It doesn't matter. You can overheat it, of course, and that could happen. You could underheat it and that could happen. I, in an ideal world, you would heat it up perfectly where the glue would just undo itself and then the screen would just fall off. The problem is I don't know what that heat junction point is on this glue and I don't really have a proper heat gun. Anyways, I used a hairdryer, which a hairdryer was perfectly good enough to get the glue to soften, but not soften enough where the screen would actually fall out. And the, since the screen itself is actually recessed into this switch, there really is no way to break that seal uh, without actually trying to pry into a corner or into a side. And reality is the moment I realized I was gonna have to pry in to break the glue seal, I kind of knew at that exact moment that I was about to break this product. Now I have taken screens off of several products before, but anytime they're recessed in, you just know this is probably going to be the end result. And typically you don't remove an entire screen like this unless you are actually going to replace it. Even on, let's say a um, an iPhone where the, the glass screen front is fine, but the underlaying screen had some sort of damage happen to it or some discoloration or something going on, you would just end up replacing not only the glass on the front, but also the panel behind it all in one assembly. You wouldn't even bother to just only replace the place the, the, the screen underneath because glass is so cheap. Obviously for a device like this, we don't have perfectly cut available tempered glass stuff for us at this moment um, for this particular use case, but that's neither here nor there. The bottom line is after it cracked, it obviously ruined uh, the OLED panel underneath. Uh, when I did initially turn it back on, it flickered. But here's the thing, why did I do this? That's, the, that's what people really wanna know. Nate, why did you do this? Well, here's some things we discovered. First off, we know who makes the panel. The panel is made by Samsung. Uh, we now have the model number for it, which will be on screen right now. And uh, what we learned from this model number is a couple things. One, uh, the PPI of the screen is 210, uh, which is 11 less than the old OLED screen. What this means is the quality of the actual pickle pixels on the screen are technically better on the original Switch and Switch Lite versus this system. So it's using lower quality pixels. But why don't people talk about that? Why are people not saying the pixels look blurry? The screen looks blurry. That's what people are worried about. It's gonna be blurry. Well, here's the thing. They exchanged pixel quality to have better efficiency with the actual lighting of the system. So better luminosity. So what they did is said, hey, look, we could keep the PPI the same as the original Switch. However, it would also eat into more battery time and we either have to compensate for that by you know, sacrificing on the luminosity or we need to sacrifice on the PPI. And I would say they actually made the right choice. I would rather them lower the quality of the pixels but maintain the same battery life um, than anything else. And I can confirm this has the exact same battery life as the version two Nintendo Switch. So if you're used to version two battery life of three to nine hours or whatever, that's exactly what you're gonna get out of this platform. And what they chose with the screen here is why. 
So will you notice the pixel quality difference? No, I've been playing with this thing for a week. I didn't notice the pixel quality difference at all. The pixels will be slightly bigger because the screen is slightly bigger. That's something you might notice in very specific use cases, maybe along some hairlines and stuff like that in some really bad anti-aliasing games like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 or something. But for the most part, you're not really going to notice it. The colors are popping so much. The screen quality and the true blacks and true whites are so much better that you end up just being mostly impressed when looking at the screen versus the original Switch. So that is a big thing we learned. Also, some people wanted to know, hey, Nate, how does that chipset look? You know, well, th this is something you don't have to break your Switch to get to. Just tell us what the model number is. Well, here's the model number on that Tegra X1 that's inside the Switch. Turns out the model number is very similar to prior model numbers, both on the Switch Lite and on the version 2 Switch, suggesting that this is basically the exact same chip. There's been no differences made. I can confirm the memory modules, the RAM modules are exactly the same. They did not swap out the type of RAM um, or put higher speed RAM or anything like that in here. The only thing they did do is uh, give us 64 gigs of flash memory versus 32, but then they took that 64 gigs and put it on the exact same board as the game card reader and the micro SD card, which in theory should make communication between all three of those slightly faster. In my actual test case, I did not find that load times were really any better. If it was on the internal memory, load times were the same as the 32 gigs. If it was on a micro SD card, it was maybe a half second. It was very hard to measure. You had to count frames. It was maybe a half second faster off the SD card compared to the same SD card in an old Switch. And then the game cards to me just felt like the same speed anyways. I don't know if the cards themselves are the limiting factor there, but um, they felt like the speeds with physical cards didn't change. So what are my conclusions, everybody? Well, um, this is a very interesting system to take apart. Now, nobody should take apart their Switch OLED unless they actually have a specific reason to do it, such as repairing it. As an example, if you drop and break your screen and you buy a third party screen to replace it, obviously, hey, the methods I used will work just fine um, because it doesn't really matter if you crack it at that point because most OLED panels come with the glass and the technology behind it all in one package. So um, you would, wouldn't really care if you crack it. So honestly, I would not take this thing apart um, if I were any of you guys, things are much more tightly compact in here uh, because they have two um, little slots in there for the actual kickstand hinges to go into. So they had to redesign the entire board um, and things are just a lot more tightly compact. There's not, uh, the, the ribbon cable stuff isn't too bad. I personally get a little frustrated uh, putting ribbon cables back in, um, but it's whatever. I did get them all in the fan on this still works. So this is still technically a working switch OLED, but only in dock mode which for many people defeats the purpose of Switch OLED. Uh, so, like, I don't know. I Honestly, um, was it worth taking it apart for you guys? Yeah, it was worth it for me. Um, even though I knew going in, you know, not, it, there was a high chance it would break, even though I've taken apart tons of phones and all that. This is obviously a different beast. I'm, I'm just going to say this. I'm cool that I brought my Switch OLED. I have a brand new one coming on Friday, so, like... I accepted going in, I was probably going to break it. I didn't do it on purpose. And I understand some people, some of you guys out there might have had the right tools and the right heat gun and the right everything to do this perfectly right. Um, and hey, you know, for some people, it might be torture that I broke a brand new device that is, hasn't even released yet. But the bottom line is this device was always um, paid for uh, specifically so I could end up creating a video like this. Honestly, when there was the decision was made to pay way more than this device is worth to make videos for you guys, I always kind of knew the end of life for this device was going to be the moment I decided to actually take it all apart. Um, I stopped myself last week during a video uh, because I decided, hey, I have other videos to make and in case I break it, I want to make sure those other videos are done. Well, now I've hit the end of the line. I got one more video left to make and I don't need to actually use the device anymore to like make that video. So. Um, thank you guys, uh, for being on the journey with Switch OLED. This is kind of the end of what you would say are the unique videos coming from my channel on, um, Switch OLED at this point. Uh, I do have one more unique video where we're going to be testing out some accessories, uh, but that won't be coming until probably next week. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. But otherwise, um, I hope you've enjoyed this journey with Switch OLED with me having early access. Uh, it was a lot of fun. This is obviously everything I did with this thing is stuff that Nintendo would definitely not approve of which is why I can tell you this system didn't come from Nintendo in the first place. Um, this is my system, my money. I'm the one that wasted it. You guys don't worry about it. Um, 
I did the best I could, and hopefully uh, at least the videos were somewhat educational. If not educational on giving you information we didn't previously have, at least educational in so much that uh, you learn what not to do to your own OLED when taking it apart, if you take it apart. To be fair, taking apart the dock is really easy. That part is, that part's really straightforward. That's like, to, you know, it's the simplest sort of device. I'm kind of glad that it is so easy. Anyways, folks, I'm Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video. Should we see? Oh, oh, I think we might have a dead one.